but for those who are not as familiar with him, Sandler was born and raised in Omaha, Nebraska. He completed the memorization of the Holy Quran in 2015 in Chicago under his teacher Maulana Mohammed Basir. He, uh, he, he finished his bachelor's degree in speech communication uh, at the University of Nebraska, his master's degree in Adida Islamic Creed from the Graduate Theological Foundation. Uh, he completed a master's degree in organizational leadership at Creighton University. He's currently serving as the imam at the Miller Masjid, it's Miller Islamic Foundation for nine years, mashallah. He teaches Islamic studies and Quran. He leads many of our youth group events in Omaha, and he is very dedicated to helping the Muslim community of Omaha grow and flourish. So I would. It is my pleasure and I'm very honored to introduce you back Santa. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Again, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'd like to begin by first giving praise and thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has blessed us not just as an organization but as a community to be in a position where we can say that we have an Islamic school in our community. And secondly, I would like to thank the community of Omaha because the establishment of an Islamic school is not the project of a few but it requires the support of the community. And what Noor Academy is a, a testament of is that the community of Omaha has what it takes to be and, and be able to establish not just an Islamic elementary school, but our goals are far beyond the elementary school level. But to be able to establish an Islamic school system here within our community. And so in, in, in developing the ideal Muslim community, we begin with the model of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When we look at the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the first 13 years of his life, the first 13 years of prophethood, the first 13 years of Islam were consumed with persecution and abuse. And the revelation that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala was sending down can be defined as the establishment of Tawheed. The establishment of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The establishment of the correct belief in Allah. And the establishment of accountability in the Muslim by virtue of belief in the hereafter. When the Muslims reached the Hijrah and they migrated from Mecca to Medina, you see a shift in the story. A shift from persecution and abuse to the establishment of a community, to the shaping of a community. And the shaping of that community largely came in the form of education. Of the first orders of business when the Prophet Sallallahu makes it to the city of Medina, he establishes his masjid, a place where the Muslims would gather, a place where the Muslims would worship, and a place where the Muslims would learn. This is why the city of Medina goes from this desert village to becoming the focal point of the Islamic empire. And similarly, our communities are in need of these institutions where Muslims can gather, where Muslims can worship, and where Muslims can learn. Education, not just of the Islamic sciences, have always been a point of emphasis within the Quran and the Sunnah. And when we look at Muslim communities, every Muslim community has an obligation set upon itself to provide for the needs of that community, to provide for the necessities that that community needs to be successful. And one of the things, one of those institutions, especially for our communities in the West, is an Islamic school, a place where your children, where our youth, can be protected and preserved from the filth that society wants to offer. Now for those of you who don't know me, and if, you, if you've heard this story, you have to hear it again. 
I was born and raised in Omaha, Nebraska. This is home for me. There is nowhere in the world that I call back home. So if this doesn't work, I have nowhere to go. I'm stuck. But being born and raised in Omaha, this is the community that my grandfather immigrated to. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him Jannah. This is the community of my father. This is the community that I stand as a servant of. And this is the community that I build, or I work to build, for the future of my kids. Growing up in Omaha, I was here for the Sunday school. I think my, my Sunday school teacher is here. Rabada. I'm going to give her Jannah. But I was here for the Sunday school. I was here for the empty board promises. I was here for the, the drama. I was here for the good, the bad, and the ugly. But being here in this community, we heard growing up, we heard the need of an Islamic school. We heard the board candidates get up there and tell you that we need an Islamic school for the community. But those were empty promises. We never seen the establishment of a school. We never seen anything close. And that's not to put shade or you know to, to slight anyone. Everyone had the right intentions, but they may not have known the work that it would take to establish an Islamic school. In 2014, when I graduated from the University of Nebraska, Omaha, I was in the process of memorizing the Quran. And I had to make the decision to leave home, to go to Chicago, to finish that goal of memorizing the Quran. And in 2015, I got a call after I, I had recited the last lesson to my teacher. I, I was given a phone call to come back home to serve as the Imam at the Miller Masjid, the Masjid that I serve today. All of that is a dream come true to memorize the Quran, to become the Imam at the Masjid that I, I also was attending as a kid. But that wasn't my goal. After spending the year in Chicago, I got to see what a Muslim community looks like. What institutions that they had that I wish I had when I was growing up. And so I had this conversation with my family, myself, my wife, and we made the decision that I wasn't planning to be the Imam that sits in the masjid and just recites Quran to you. I wasn't planning to be the old-fashioned, old, you know, the, the traditional Imam that gets up there and, and, and recites hadith to you. My goal was to come back and deliver to the city of Omaha what was promised to me when I was a kid. My goal was to come back to the city of Omaha and deliver what should have been delivered decades in advance. And that is how your academy came to be. And so in 2015, the work began to become a nonprofit organization, to get the, the board established, to get committees uh, set up, to get like-minded people to get the ball rolling on this project. And in 2017, we had our first preschool class of 11 students. The following year, we doubled in size to 22. And so we seen that the momentum was good, so we rented a bigger space. And 2019 and 20 and 21 went by, and again we doubled in size to 43. And in 2022, we stood before the community with the prospect of a new building, of a building that we would own, that would become an asset for the Muslim community of Omaha. A building, our current building, that houses and has the occupancy of 150 students. And just for reference, we have 63 full-time students today. 150 students would realistically allow us to grow in not just to the fifth grade, but into the middle school ages. And we have that building. We own, and I really want to emphasize that, we own the building. We own the property. We don't have to buy another land. We don't have to buy another building. We have the building to be able to be a full elementary and even into middle school ages. So that's in our hands. But the question that has, to be, that has to be posed to the community is why Islamic school? Why an Islamic school? I, I don't think, I mean, how many parents we have here? I don't think I have to convince you as to what's going on out in society. I don't think I have to convince you of how dangerous public schools has become to the minds of our kids. I mean, you know more than I know. 
the extreme level of openness that our kids are exposed to now. The extreme level of corrupted thinking that our kids are exposed to. And Islamic school is supposed to be that institution that, yes, provides the academics, but also is a place to protect and preserve the Muslim identity of our kids. That is why your academy exists. That is why we're working to establish this Islamic school, to protect and preserve the Islamic identity of our youth and our community. This agenda that, that our kids are being exposed to is a contradiction to our set of Islamic beliefs. And we're not going to be able to see the effects that our kids are having to this exposure in the elementary school ages. It's when they get to middle school and high school that you start to see the effect of what they were exposed to. And at that time is when parents call the Imam and they ask the Imam to come and save my kids. If you're calling the Imam and your kids are in middle and high school, it was too late. It was too late to save them. They were already exposed. Their foundations were, were, were changed. The time to invest in your kids is at the elementary school level. And that is just an addition. That is just the addition to the motive of why we started your academy. When I was in public school, I went to public schools here in Omaha. The fear that Muslim parents had was that my kids were going to drink. That my kids were going to get involved in drugs. That my kids were going to get involved in the obvious dating scene. But what they feared then has now become normal. And if you think today is as bad as it's going to be, come and speak to me in five to ten years. What is bad today will become normal tomorrow. Which is why we need this Islamic school. You want to call it your academy, you want to call it whatever. We need an Islamic school in our community. For the protection and the preservation of our kids' Islamic identity. So that out in society, when the people are confused as to what they identify as, our kids will identify as Muslim. And that is the goal. But we have to again ask the question, why Islamic school? What is Islamic school worth to me? What am I willing to do? What effort am I willing to put forward to make sure that the community has the assets that it needs to be successful? Because in the process of establishing your academy, no one told me the Islamic school was a bad idea. Not one person has ever stopped me in the process, the process of establishing this school. Has told me, you know, an Islamic school, we don't need an Islamic school. Nobody told me that. And I don't believe that any rationally thinking Muslim, and I emphasize rationally, any rationally thinking Muslim would speak and say that an Islamic school is a bad idea. But the moment the project became real, people started taking steps back. People started to take steps away from the project when they started to see what work was going to be needed to make this project successful. But that shouldn't scare us away from to keep moving forward. That should not scare us away. Work should not make us back away from a project, especially a project like this and what success it could bring to this community. You know, as a parent, again, you have to ask the question, what is it worth to me? What is the protection of my children worth to me? You know, if the issue is tuition, you know, Danielle told you about the, the cost of, of schooling in Omaha. We're half the cost of tuition of any private school. But anything of value comes at a cost. Anything that has value comes at a cost. So if the issue is tuition, but we have plans and goals and visions for our kids. The cost of tuition is nothing more than family planning. Is the issue distance? If the issue is distance, public schools are in every neighborhood. A public school is no more than five to seven minutes away from anyone's house. But we happen to be on 192nd and Harrison Street, on the far corner of the city. If the issue is distance, again, I bring up the same statement. Anything of value comes at a cost. Whether that be money, whether that be a few extra minutes to and from school. What is the protection of your children worth to you? That is something you have to answer. That is something that you have to come up with. But at the end of the day, we realize the day will come 
where we will see the effect of what our kids were exposed to. The time to invest in your children, the time to invest in this community is now. So that we can see the fruits of our labor in the you know, down the line. And so we have to be a forward-thinking community. We have to be a forward-thinking people. That if we want to see our kids successful, you don't wait until they've aged to start to invest in them. You invest in them when they're small. You invest in them before they've reached the point where you call the imam and say, can you please come and save my kids? And so we gather here as, first and foremost, we gather as a celebration of what Noor Academy has achieved. We gather as a celebration for what the community of Omaha has achieved because Noor Academy is a product of what Omaha has achieved. But we also emphasize that there are steps to be taken. What seems small today will be massive tomorrow if we collectively take the steps to reach that goal of not just the elementary school, look beyond it, of establishing an Islamic school system for our kids, not just now, not just 10 years from now, but generations to come. And so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to continue to bless this project. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to continue to bless this community. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the establishment of an Islamic school a means for uniting the division that exists within our community. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika wa ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi.